So we're going to pick up kind of where we left off talking about uh, electrolysis, okay? And um, electrolysis is the process in which electrical energy is used to cause the non-spontaneous process. So we're kind of pushing it backwards, right? So we can cause spontaneous, um, the spontaneous pr process of passing electrons from one thing to another through uh, these redox reactions, okay? But if you want to push it backwards, you have to um, use energy to do that, to go backwards, the non-spontaneous process. And um, that's what we call electrolysis. So when, whenever you charge the battery in your phone, you're causing those electrons to go backwards, okay? And then you replenish the, the charge, and then they can go forwards again spontaneously. Okay, and you can use your phone for 10 hours or whatever. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, so that's, that's what electrolysis is. So here's kind of an example. You can actually pass electricity through sodium chloride salt, uh, well, not solid, but liquid sodium chloride. And this isn't aqueous sodium chloride. Uh, aqueous sodium chloride, you could also pass ele uh, electricity through. Um, but this is molten, so imagine salt, and you've melted it, okay? That would have to be at really, really high temperatures, but it's possible to molten the sodium chloride, and if you molten it, you could actually pass electricity through it, because they are ions, and they would allow for the passage of electricity um, uh, in that state. In the solid state, there's no chance. Right? You're not going to pass electricity through salt crystals. But if you molten it, you can. Okay? And uh, when you do that, you would produce chlorine gas and uh, uh, liquid sodium, which could then um, cool down into solid sodium metal. So this is a process of actually collecting sodium metal, a way of uh, getting sodium metal. Uh, or, or even purifying chlorine gas, okay? But it's through this electrolysis process. So um, here's your anode, and here are the, the cathodes, okay? And that's where you're producing the sodium, and here you're producing the chlorine gas. Um, the chlorine ion is negatively charged. That's why... Um, we say it's going here to the anode. The sodium would be positively charged. That's why it's going to the, the cathode here. Okay. Okay. So here we, we see that this is providing that charge. This is uh, the electrons from the anode are traveling this way to the cathode. Okay. Um, and oxidation at the anode is going from uh, uh, chlorine negative to chlorine solid, or it's not, not solid, but chlorine gas, okay, because it lost two electrons. And then it can become molecular chlorine. Creates that, by losing those two electrons, it can now bond molecularly and uh, become a gas in that state, okay? Whereas the sodium will pick up those two electrons and become a solid sodium metal at the cathode. Okay. So, which is uh, kind of the reverse process of, of uh, what would be happening if it was the spontaneous reaction. Okay. So we're, we're pushing it backwards. If you put sodium and chlorine together, chlorine gas, sodium metal together, they will react spontaneously, okay, and you'll end up with salt, sodium chloride, okay. Those two things would react spontaneously together, but to get them to go backwards, we use this electrolysis process. All right, now water, you can also um, uh, cause uh, electrolysis of water, right? And that uh, you need a, an a electrolyte available to pass the electrons through the water to be able to accomplish that. But you would have an anode and a cathode. You have a, a power supply here, 
okay? And um, here at the oxidation that's occurring, okay, um, your water is uh, breaking down into oxygen, okay, uh, and hydrogen, and then uh, those hydrogens will combine to form H2 gas. So this would be a way to uh, create hydrogen gas and oxygen gas through the process of electrolysis. Um, the, uh, the electrolyte of this solution is H2SO4, okay? So it will conduct electricity and you will bubble here at the, the positive terminal. Um, you're going to collect the oxygen because the, the oxygens are negatively charged. They'll be attracted to that, this side, and they'll bubble off over here. The H pluses over here come over here and combine into H2, and you create oxygen and hydrogen gas, okay? Which could actually be used as a fuel. Actually, that's the fuel on the space shuttle. That's what they use on the space shuttle, except they use it in liquid form liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen, or sorry, liquid uh, hydrogen that have been super cooled. That's why they're in, that's why it looks all frosty on the, before takeoff, because it's the super cooled liquid containers. So they use liquid oxygen and hydrogen, and that's their, that's the space shuttle fuel, okay? Not the rocket boosters on the side. That's different. That's a solid thing that's just burning and creating that thrust. But uh, the space shuttle itself has a big orange tank on it right in the middle, and that's full of liquid oxygen and nitrogen, <sighs> liquid oxygen and hydrogen. And those two things combine. Uh, they're very explosive. It's very explosive. So, you know, if you have a, um, if you collect hydrogen, that's pretty, uh, if you collect hydrogen in a balloon or something, that's a very explosive balloon because just have to create a spark there and it's going to um, react with the oxygen in the air and you're going to get a big boom. All right, but that's, that's this uh, electrolysis process here. Uh, so here you can see it collects in a two to one ratio because if we look at the balanced chemical equation of water, H2O to H2 plus O2, Okay, and if we balance that, we get two of these, two of these. So there's two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of oxygen created from the water. And we can see that here. We can see that the hydrogen gas is collecting more quickly because there's, there's twice as much of it that's being created for every mole of water that splits. So we can, we can kind of imagine the molar uh, quantities here too. Okay, so um, kind of the practical idea behind uh, electrolysis is that you can determine from the charge um, kind of the, the number of moles of, uh, of electrons and things that um, you're, you're using here, okay? And it would be through a process like this. You don't have to do it. We'll look at an example, but this is kind of the example. Okay, yes, you're not gonna have to do any calculations like this. I won't do anything like this, okay? But how much calcium will be produced in an electrolysis cell uh, of molten calcium chloride if a current of 0.452 amps is passed through the cell for 1.5 hours? So an hour and a half, uh, it's at 0.452 amps. How much calcium chloride am I going to make, okay? And it's basically a stoichiometry question, okay? So, and so we do a bunch of conversions. First, we figure out the, the balanced chemical equation for the, the anode and the cathode, the overall reaction here. We have to figure out the number of electrons, okay? It's mol two moles of electrons um, for every one mole of calcium. That's going to become a conversion factor that we would use. So the moles of calcium here uh, are equal to, all right? So first we have, uh, so A, is essentially equal to, um, well I should say, C equals A times
times s times the seconds. Okay, so that's why um, a is uh, equal to c over s. Okay, so that this there, we're just substituting a here for c over s, so we can see the the units in, uh, of this conversion. Okay, so we get our uh, 0 0.42, 0 0.452 amps uh, for 1.5 hours. We convert that 1.5 hours to seconds because we want this in seconds. Okay, and that's our, how our amps, uh, the units of our amps work. Okay, and then we're going to convert it uh, using the Faraday constant. Faraday constant is 96,500 coulombs for every one mole of electrons. Okay, now we've converted it to moles. So this is moles of calcium, all right? Um, and stoichiometrically, we have one mole of calcium for every two moles of electrons. I'm sorry. The, earlier, this is the moles of electrons. We converted to the moles of calcium with that final kind of stoichiometry step here. Two of these for every one of these, OK? And we will get. Point zero one two six moles of calcium, all right. But it's not asking for the moles. It's asking for well, I guess it's not really saying grams, but it, it's saying how much <coughs> you would you. It would be they want to know the the mass, how much calcium in mass. That's in the laboratory. That's what's practical to us. We we can't weigh out moles of calcium, but we can we can weigh out grams of calcium in the laboratory. So how many grams of calcium is that? It's point five grams of calcium. All right, so that's kind of the practical application of uh, this uh, electrolysis process, de determining how, this is a theoretical yield, right? And then we could actually run the experiment, see how much we produce. We could find a percent yield from that. Okay, all that fun kind of stuff. Okay. Um, all right, well, this is the last slide, but... Um, this is just showing that oxidation reduction of if you if you ever known somebody that has discomfort because they got a, a filling next to their um, gold crown or something in their mouth. <laughs> well, it's because you have this uh, electrical charge being sent through there that that irritates the nerves, and uh, so uh, because of the the filling. Is the tin mercury, and the, this uh, is the gold, and it's doing a spontaneous process every time they close their mouth. They're getting an electrical charge through there. I guess so. Yeah. Okay, so if you, for all you future dentists, <laughs> don't don't put a filling next to a gold. Uh, Okay, spontaneous, yes, it's spontaneous. I don't want to stop it. Okay, so let's go back here to the beginning of the chapter. Let's do a few examples of balancing. Okay, how do we balance these um, redox reactions? Okay, so here, uh, the first one we're going to balance is um, hydrogen peroxide reacts with iron 2 to form iron 3 plus water. And it's in an acid. So what are the steps that, um, what are the steps that I'm taking? Half reactions. Okay. I'm going to break them up into their half reactions. All right. So, um, we have H2O2, okay, is going to what? H2O. And Fe2 plus is going to Fe3 plus, okay? So now um, is the iron. 
Is the iron balanced or not balanced? Okay, so we don't really have to do much with the iron because it's already uh, it's already balanced, right? Okay, but what are we going? What about the the water? Okay, so what do I need to do about that? Okay, so if it, if there if we were deficient in oxygens, okay, well first we need to balance the oxygens. Okay, so let's do that. Let's balance the oxygens. So put a two here. Okay. Um, but you know I can't I can't balance it as it is. I can't put a, a two over here and then you know keep going back and forth. I can't do that. That's because I I need an acid. I need to add acid. So plus, H plus, and I need two of those. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at the electron transfer here. Let's look at the electron transfer. So this oxygen has what ox oxidation number on it? What is the oxidation? It is minus one. In hydrogen peroxide, that's, the, that's kind of the exception. It's the only one. Otherwise, it would be negative two. But hydrogen peroxide, it's negative one. Okay? And the hydrogens are plus one. And it goes from hydrogen peroxide, negative one, to water, what? Negative two. Okay? So how many electrons went from, or what is, where do I write the electrons in this equation? Did I gain or lose electrons? So if I went from negative one to negative two, that means I what? I gained, how many electrons did I gain? Okay, for each, for each of these, each of these I gained, for each oxygen I gained one. But how many oxygens are there? Two. So that's two electrons that I gained. Did I lose electrons? So they're a product, I mean a reactant, right? I gained electrons, so they are part of the reaction. They're gaining them. Okay. Now look at Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. What? Um, I lost one electron. So it is a product of this reaction. Okay. Because I lost one electron. No, I don't say minus E. I just say it's a product. I have released it. It's a. It's a, one of the the products of this reaction. An electron becomes free. It's always pluses. We don't use subtraction in the chemical equation. <coughs> okay. So, can I combine these two now? No. Why not? have to make the electrons equal. So what do I need to do? So instead of just one iron, I need two irons to produce two electrons that can be accepted by the hydrogen peroxide to produce water. Okay? So now I I can finish this reaction. Okay? So this reaction I'm going to have these electrons will cancel and I'll have 2H+ plus plus H2O2 plus 2Fe2 plus produces 2H2O plus 2Fe3 plus. Okay? And this is the balanced chemical equation in the acid solution.
Okay. Let's try another one. Copper plus nitric acid produces copper 2 plus plus NO plus H2O. And this is in an acid solution. Okay, so what are the two half reactions? Okay, so this copper is obviously solid. This this one is aqueous. I probably just didn't write that. Okay, NO. Okay, so what's my first half reaction? Copper. Copper going to copper two plus. I'm sorry. Okay plus two electrons. <clears throat> what about my next half reaction? What is it? Good. Okay. So that's my other half reaction. Now I need to balance them. All right, I need to figure out the uh, oh, yeah, I need to balance this one. This one's balanced. I need to balance this one. I have one nitrogen. I have one hydrogen, and I have three oxygens. Let's balance the oxygens first. What's that? How many... How many waters do I need to balance those three oxygens? Two more. Okay. So I have two waters plus NO produce. Uh, what am I missing? I need hydrogens over here, right? So how many hydrogens? Three, right? I need three hydrogens. Okay, this isn't an acid solution. What, uh, what is the number of electrons that are being? So what, what got, um, what changed in oxidation state? What element? Did oxygen change? Nope. Did hydrogen? Nope. The nitrogen. So what's the oxidation number of nitrogen right here? It's plus 5. And over here, it's plus 2. So is that gaining or losing electrons? Gaining. Going from plus 5 to plus 2, I have to gain electrons to become less positively charged. Right? Okay? So where am I going to write the electrons? I'm going to write them over here as a reactant. How many electrons? Three. Three. Okay, well, this isn't quite as simple as the earlier one. Just multiply everything by two, right? So I have two electrons on top. I have three on the bottom. What's the easiest way to make those match? Multiply the top by three, the bottom by two. Exactly. Multiply the top by three, the bottom by two. So three coppers, three copper two pluses, and I'm going to change this to six electrons. Okay? This is six electrons now. Um, times 6 H pluses times 2 HNO3s and 2 NOs and 4 H2Os. Okay. Now I'm going to combine these two. Okay. My electrons are going to cancel. And I'm left with three coppers plus six H plus plus two H NO three produces three copper two pluses plus two NO 
plus 4 H2. Sure. Okay. So if um, if I have, let's say, uh, we'll just draw a number scale here. Um, this is plus one, plus two, plus three. Actually, I should draw it this way. So it, it, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, plus one, plus two plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, okay? So if my charge is 0, okay, um, then I'm right here. If I lose electrons, I'm going, becoming more positive, right? Loss of electrons. If I gain electrons, I'm going this way, gain electrons. So if I start it right here, and I go to right here, that is a gain of electrons because it's becoming less positively charged. Okay? Does that help or not? Is it still confusing? Does it relate to valence electrons? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Um, it, for the oxidation state, it doesn't really. Okay? Nitrogen can have lots of oxidation states. <coughs> and those do not relate to the, because the valence electrons will give you a negative three charge, right? But yes, nitrogen, if it's in a, if it's in a compound, it relates more to, um, kind of more to its, uh, I don't want to say that. Uh, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily relate. The oxidation state of nitrogen in a compound doesn't. If we're talking about ions, that's different. Becoming an ion is different than your oxidation state inside of a compound surrounded by other elements. Okay, so it, it's a little different, and they can it can change. So it is. It's gaining electrons, becoming less positively charged, going from plus 5 to plus uh, 2. Um, and so we would, we would show it like that. OK. So we're going to take cyanide plus permanganate. And uh, we're going to balance this in a base solution, OK? So what are my two half reactions here? CN minus is going to go to CNO minus, right? And then we have. Uh, MnO4 is going to go to MnO2. Okay, so these are my two half reactions. I want to balance them. I have the same number of coppers, the same number of nitrogens. What do I not have the same number of? I do not have the same number of oxygens. Okay, so. Um, how do I get the same number of oxygens? Now hydroxide. I add water. Okay, I have to add waters. Okay, so H two O. That's how I'm going to balance the oxygens. And then after I balance the oxygens, um, I can balance the hydrogens by adding what? 
H pluses, okay? <coughs> Two H plus. All right. Now, is everything, do I have everything uh, kind of balanced here? All the elements are balanced? Yeah. Okay. So, um, how many electrons are being transferred here? None? Yeah, that's, that's definitely wrong. Okay, guys, what's the oxidation state of copper here? Or not copper, I mean carbon. You have to figure out the oxidation state uh, of the, the carbon and the nitrogen and I, I can't remember that one right now. Yeah, you're right. This one, this one's a little tricky, and I think what it is is, uh, I think that this does have a plus five. This would have a plus. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, that would have to be negative six. Well, that's a pretty standard oxidation state for nitrogen. But I don't, uh, carbon usually has a plus four. So this would have to be negative five. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but I think that's partly what's going on. But you can see once you add the oxygen, this one's definitely, let's just, just stick with that. Let's say this stays at plus four. This goes to negative two. Uh, what's the nitrogen go to? <laughs> Negative three. Okay. Oh, I know. I know what's gonna. Let's do the bottom one first because that's gonna tell us. Uh, let's do the bottom one first. That's gonna tell us which which way the electrons are going. Before we do that one. Okay. So let's do the bottom one. Good. So I need two waters. Oops. H two H two O. Okay, that gives me the uh, four oxygens that I need, and then I'm going to say plus four H plus over here, right? Um, okay. Now, what about now? What about the uh, the oxidation state of this manganese here? Okay, this is negative eight. This is going to be plus eight. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, it's still negative eight, but there's a negative charge, so this is yeah plus seven. So it's plus seven. Uh, this is negative four. Did this one? That one went to zero charge, so it's. Well, there's no charge on this one. No charge. Okay. So from plus seven to plus four, what are the number of electrons here? Okay, so it's three electrons, and I had to do what? I had to gain them to go from plus seven to plus four. Plus three electrons. Okay. I have to gain three electrons to go from a positive seven to a plus four. Why are you just looking at that number? The 
looking at which number? Why are they saying anymore? Because those are the only things that change oxidation state. The manganese is the only the manganese is the only thing that's telling me how many electrons are being transferred here in this. So you look at the, the oxidation number that changes to determine how many electrons? Yes, you do. Okay. Um Okay, so that no, I won't, I won't, no. so that 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 means this. Okay, we're going in the right direction here. Okay, so we lost we lost electrons. Um, okay, all right. Now, the other thing that we have to consider here is that this is in what type of solution. This is in a base. So when we, when we do it in a basic solution, we have to do everything the same as we would do in a acid solution, okay? Um, except now we have to add hydroxides to, to balance out uh, because it's in base, okay? So wherever there's H pluses, and there's H pluses in both things, okay? I need to add hydroxides to the same number um, as the H plus. So I need to add over here, I need to add plus two OH minuses on this side, and I need to add two OH minuses on this side. Okay, do you guys see what I did there? Why did you put it on that one then? Because I have two H pluses. So I, have, I add two OH minuses here, which is the same number as the H pluses, but I have to do it to both sides. And then on the bottom one, I would do the same thing, except this time it would be four OH minuses here, plus four OH minuses here. Yes? Do I add what? Why are you adding like OS on both sides? Why am I adding it to both sides? Um, because that maintains the balance. Okay, and also it what it does is it takes these H pluses, and because it's in basic solution, it forms water. Okay, so these two things, this is going to become two waters on that side, and I'm going to be left with OH minus over here. Okay, so they go away on that one side. And so I have to add it to both sides so it maintains the balance and also because that one side is going to become water and leaves you with the OH minuses on the other side, leaves it in the basic solution. Okay, so um, I'm going to rewrite that top one to be 2OH minus plus H2O plus CN minus. Yes, that's what we're going to have to do. Okay. Um, and then on the bottom, okay, we're going to have to combine the, these four OHs with those four H pluses form four waters. So four H2O plus three electrons plus MnO4 minus produces MnO2 plus 2H2O plus 4OH uh, minus. Okay? Why did you rewrite it on the other side? The top one? Wait, did you or you just copy it exactly? I didn't copy it exactly. I combined the OHs with the H pluses to form water. So this has 4OHs plus 4H pluses those combine to form four water molecules, okay? Now, the number of electrons are not balanced, so I need to balance the electrons, okay? I need to multiply the top by three. So we have three OHs here. Um, 
Oh, you know what? I, I, I should have eliminated this water. Can we eliminate the water first? Yes, please. Before we do that? Yes. Say yes, please. No, thank you. <laughs> Uh, and this would be with just one water over here. I would eliminate one water from each side. Can you get rid of the water? Uh, this side, I get rid of these waters. I'm sorry. Yeah. Plus four. What? Why are you getting rid of whoa, whoa. And that leaves me with two H2Os here. Because they're on both sides of the reaction, they cancel. Okay. Wouldn't it two H2Os? It should be two H2Os. Oh, I'm sorry. Six OHs plus three CN minuses. Am I am I on track? Yes. Okay. Three OHs. Um. Three of these plus three waters plus six electrons. Okay. Four H two O's, six electrons. 2 MnO4 minuses, 2 MnO2s, and 8 H. They didn't all cancel. One of them was left. No, you have 4 and 2. No, on the top I had 2 and 1, right? Yeah. 2 and then you have 4 on the bottom. 2 over there and 1 over there. Okay, now, they, now we can start canceling waters again. Okay? When we, when we add this together, we'll cancel the waters. Okay, so the six electrons cancel. Uh, you're right that these three go away, and I'm left with just one H2O here. Okay, so uh, I cancel out three of these waters. You had four H pluses and four OHs, so there should have been four H2Os on the bottom when there was two H2Os on the top to begin with. So if those two should have gone away, those should be a two now times two. Okay, I have it right here. Look, okay, up here. Okay, I have one H2O here, uh, and I formed, from that, I formed two H2Os. Over there, and then that down on the bottom one. That left me with one H2O when I canceled those. Two minus one, I have one. In its own reaction. Yes, I did. Okay. And that left me with one. And then I multiplied the whole thing by three, and so I had three waters there. Okay, I did the same thing here. I had two waters over there. I formed four waters over here. I canceled two of them. That left me with four H2Os. I'm sorry. Or with two. But then I multiplied it by two. Thank you. It left me with two. I multiplied it by two, and now I have four H2Os. Now I cancel one of them over there, uh, three of them over there from here, and I'm left with one H2O right here. Some of that gets crossed. Okay. Which, which would work? Which would work? I mean, either way it would work. No, because I got different. You didn't end up with one water. No. Okay. I'm not related to all this. But I'm. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're left with one water because those three waters cancel. Uh, we have six OH minuses. Um, we have three CN minuses plus two MnO4s. Okay, produces three CNO minus plus two MnO2s plus eight. OH minuses. Okay? And then that, oh wait, I'm sorry, I should have canceled OH. OHs. These six cancel, so I don't actually have those. I have one H2 over here. Okay? Uh, and it leaves me with two OH minuses over here. Okay? So then this ends up being um, our balanced chemical equation. Hey, we actually did it right. <laughs> it matches. Okay, so I guess we did figure out those oxidation states. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. What did you do? So you just use plus 4 for carbon? Yeah, I just, um, I, w I just guessed what they were. Okay. 
basically, which, which you guys wouldn't need to do. I, w I won't give you something like that. But um, I just decided that it must be a negative. Uh, carbon is almost always plus four. So uh, I made the assumption then that nitrogen had to be negative five, and it went from negative five to negative three. Carbon, it's either negative four or plus four a lot of times. So that's kind of where I, I went. I guess so. We did it. We got it. Okay. So let's do this next one. Okay. So I want you guys to try this one. Br2 to Br3 minus to plus Br minus. This, this one shouldn't be a... Um, You don't need to use a half reaction. Just balance it as, as it is. So you're going to have to add, to balance those oxygens, you're going to have to add waters. Okay? Just balance it as kind of one whole thing. It does. Well, that, that one goes to five, right? And then that, and then that's that's negative five. one. That one goes that, to negative one. Would that be total of plus four? Or plus six, right? Um, plus five. five. Yeah, you're going to have to. So technically, plus four. Mm -hmm. Plus total. So you, when you have the same element, you add them together, right? Well, that's, that's, you can just kind of figure out the overall for this whole thing, yeah. Okay. Because you're just keeping it together. Uh, I, I guess if, it, if you wanted to break it up into two half reactions to help you, you could say Br2 to BrO3 minus and then Br2 to Br minus and create two half reactions there if that's easier for you, then do that. If that, if that helps you see the, the transfer of the electrons. It's just you don't cancel the electrons. You just show that the electrons are going one way or the other. They're either on one side or the other. It's, it's not a cancellation of electrons. Okay, you know what guys, do, do break it up into those half reactions, it's going to help you. Break it up into the half reaction. Okay, Br2, zero to, to BrO3 minus, and then Br2 to Br minus. Do those two half reactions. Once you once you get everything balanced, um, then yeah, you just have to determine uh, how many of these you would need to to 
cars. No, no, no. Not like a, not like packaging is always sold. You see what I'm saying? I think you have to pay for that. First, it. yeah, you don't. Well, you don't have to because. Um. What is that? That's a plus four. So you lost plus four electrons. And so you'd have to have four electrons over here. Basically, whatever this ends up being, that has to be the same. Right. Because you have to gain that many cars. So you'd have to multiply. I'm just going to do it in two. Don't forget that this isn't base. This isn't a basic solution. So if it's in base, you add, um, since there are like three oxygens here, you add three OH, right? Okay. Not. No, no, no. No. Okay, so three oxygen, so I need three H2O. Okay, and then I need plus six H pluses over here, because I had another one. So to balance the oxygens, I add H2O, okay? And then I, and then I'll, that's how I do that, okay? Here, uh, it's just purely electrons being transferred, okay? But here, you added um, hydroxyl line, right? So it's in base. So how does it work? I don't know. I okay, well now that it's in base, now I'm going to add plus 6 OH minuses here and plus 6 OH minuses here. That's what I do for the base. So, you add so it, when it's in acid, I do I do it the same as I would for acid, and then after I'm done, then I do it for the the base, and then these become six waters, six H two O, okay, and then this becomes uh, that just stays as there you go. So now I just need to multiply this by five. Okay, so you. Add water for ten, then only you add the hydroxyl ion. Right. So this one's being oxidized, while this one's being reduced, right? And one of the BR is gone out. Yeah, for BR to plus five, uh, this one lost electrons, so it's oxidized. That one's reduced. Okay, and this plus one electron, plus five electron. Um, yeah, well, in the end, they would have to balance. Yeah. Um, well, isn't that the final though? I think. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's, that's right. right. Okay. That's right.
Well, you guys tell me. What is it? Uh, yeah, 0.4 OH minus 7 BRP equals 3 to the 4 Okay, now in the final reaction, just eliminate the electrons. So okay. they should match. Okay, you said, okay, well, electrons. They don't match. No. You have to make a match. BR2 BR2 to what? 2 BR2 BR2 to BR2 BR minus Oh yeah 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 So is that 2 electrons? That well yes it is. It is 2 right? Okay so let let's break it up here. Okay. I I think I'm Okay so we're going to go from BR2 to um let me do it somewhere else. I need some room. Okay, let me just do it right here. Br, uh, just two to BrO three minus. Minus. Okay, yes. and Br two to Br minus, and I need two of those to balance that, right? Well, I, I, you can, but um, I said it's probably going to be better if you do this so you can see it, what's happening, okay? It's, it's, it's going to be... I'm just starting over It's going to be better if you do it in two. Okay, so BR2, I need more room. BRO3 minus, and then we have 
br2 to br minus. We have two of those plus two electrons. Okay. Um, and then we need three H2Os to balance the waters here, right? We need, well, I'm sorry, we need two bromines there. Uh, so that's six H2Os, right? Um, and it's going to go from zero to plus five. So that's, what is it? Yes, you do. Uh, 12 H pluses uh, plus five electrons. Nope, 10 electrons. Right, 10 electrons. Yes, so we're going to, because there's two of those, so plus 10 electrons. Okay, now this is about, we have to balance this in, uh, in OH minus plus OH minus. Um, we have 12 OH minuses, okay. We have to add that to each side. You know, Andrea, what we did, I, I was forgetting to balance some of these things. So that's why it's a little different, okay, from what that's we used. One. That one is, because we, I forgot to balance these, the BRs, you know, what I was showing you, okay? Okay, so plus those 12 OH minuses. Um, this one is going to form over here. We're just going to say 12 H2Os on this side. Two O's plus ten electrons. Okay, and that's the top one, right? Okay. Now I I have to make these two match. So I need to multiply this by five. Um, which I didn't have to do that. Okay. So we're going to get ten electrons plus five BR2s plus 10 BR minuses. We're okay with that? Yes. Okay, so what do we get? We get 12 OH minuses plus six H2Os plus uh, these cancel, these cancel. Oh, we can get rid of some of those waters. So uh, these are gone, right? Because we cancel those six. So this becomes six over here. Uh, so these are gone. Um, okay, so that's six BR2s, right? Produces two BR03 minuses plus 10 BR minuses plus 6H2O. Okay? Now, what do you notice about this? Looks perfect. <laughs> um, is it in its lowest ratio? Okay, so we have 6OH minuses plus 3BR2 produces BRO3 minus. Uh, plus five BR minuses plus three H two O. It's because uh, I forgot to to take this. It's BR twos, and so I, I need to two BRs, which gave me two. I had to have two electrons over here. That's what initially when what I didn't. Uh, initially, it was um, BR2 to BR minus, right? Well, this has to be two BR minuses, and that means that I have to gain two electrons. We were just doing one electron, right? So, and then also, that was for the bottom reaction. And then this top one, we had to have two BRO3s because we went from BR2, we had to have two BRs. Okay. Okay. Yep, right there. 
All right. So that's how that's how we're going to do that one. Now the the next couple uh, actually relate to our lab today, because in lab we're going to be doing um, an oxidation reduction titration of bleach. So we're going to take bleach and we're going to titrate it um, using oxidation reduction. Okay, so. You're going to reduce the bleach uh, with an oxidizer. Um, that way, you can. Uh, so, if you know the stoichiometry there, then uh, through the balanced chemical equation, you'll be able to figure out just like an acid base reaction how many moles of bleach are in a, um, a sample of bleach. Okay? So, how many hypochlorite ions? So, um, that's where these three reactions are going to come from. Okay. The ones in the lab, we're going to use the hypochlorite ion, which is bleach. Okay. And um, we're, uh, the bleach is going to go from uh, this uh, plus one state here to uh, the negative one. Okay. So we're transferring those electrons there. And then the I minus is going to go from I minus to I two. All right, so um, let's go ahead and let's do this one first, F. So we have, what half reactions do we have there? Good, and? Good. Okay, so I minus I2. This is this is in an acid solution. Yes, it would.
you go from plus one to negative one? No, 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 to the bottom one. Yes, because you have two I minuses. So you have to lose two electrons, one uh, from each. Why is there two electrons? Or oh, ways? Or two i? Yes. Because it's i two, so I have to have two of each to form oh, an i two. Okay. So is this what you guys are getting? Okay. So that's that first reaction in the lab for the lab today. Okay. And uh, we're going to couple that with this reaction. Um, S2O3, 2 minus, plus I2, 2 I minus, plus S4O6, 2 minus. Okay, so we have these two. We have S2O3, S2O3, that's it, 2 minus, 2 minus. Okay, um, two S four six also two minus two minus two minus. Okay, and then I two. So now let's balance this one. Yes, got to have that. Okay. So the S203, what's the, what's the charge of the S? So uh, we have negative six, this is plus one, because you got to divide it by two. For each sulfur, it's plus one, right? Okay, so plus two overall, yes. No, it's minus two overall, right? Oh, okay, so now what is the, what is the, ox the oxidation number of sulfur here is plus one, right? Okay, so we have negative six, minus two. Uh, we have two left over, right? right? So that's uh, it has to be plus four. So that means, oh, I'm sorry. Um, this is negative four. Yep, you're right. <laughs> plus four divided by two, so it's plus two. Each sulfur has a plus two oxidation of. Okay, good. Thank you. I just had to work it out. Okay, so uh, this one is negative 12, leaves me with negative 10 because I have a 2 minus. What? Oh, yeah, that is a tricky one, huh? Um, let's see here. That's a. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we'll just have to do two. That's uh, going to be. Let me see here. Uh, plus 2.5. Okay, and we'll once we balance it out, we'll get rid of that half. Okay. So we don't have to add any waters, right? Um, so, that, okay, so it went from plus 2 to plus 2.5, so plus 0 0.5 electrons here, 
Okay? And here we have what? Plus two e minuses. So you have to divide the bottom one or multiply the top one by four? Yeah. Or divide the bottom one by four? Well, we'll, we'll multiply the top, top by four, right? Yeah. So um, we're going to get eight of those, four of those to give us two electrons. Four times 0.5 is two, so that gives us two electrons. Okay. All right. Now uh, my electrons cancel. Sorry, what was that? Oh, 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 oh. Say it again, I'm sorry. In the final, yeah, in the final, would you still have these negative two charges right here on these? Or yes. No, it's not the 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 acid. We're not. It is an acid. Uh, you're right, but uh, we didn't have to do anything with the oxygens or because uh, we only use those to balance the the oxygens if we need to. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, what were you saying?
Okay, uh, the, the problem I'm having here is that Yes, that's it does. So, so we we have to consider that. Is that what you're telling me? Okay, I think I think we're we're thinking too hard about this one, myself included, because I'm going from a, a two negative times two to a two negative times one, right? So, um, because, because the oxidation numbers aren't really working out, I think we just need to look at the charge because uh, the charges of these so this, this is a, essentially two mi 4 minus, right? And then I have 2 minus here. So I lost two electrons, OK? Right, I mean, that's, it has to be that because these are the charges. So I just need to look at the overall charge of these, these compounds, it, mostly because we only have one that we're dealing with here. We just have one compound that we're dealing with. So it's kind of like how we're looking for I. Right, I, I mean, if I'm doing the oxidation numbers, they're not really working, right? Probably because this is uh, the ch oxidation number of the oxygen is also changing, which we're not considering. So um, and because we can't really figure that out, just look at this, 2 minus, 2 minus. If I have two of these with a two negative charge, that's four negative charges, right? And here I have one of these with a two negative charge. That means I had to lose two electrons. I mean, the net effect has to be two electrons, right? That I lost. You guys okay? I don't think you're going to because, like we did the oxidation numbers, it's, it, there's something, I think this oxygen must change oxidation state as well. So I only five electrons left for each S, so the four on your side would have four with Okay, that's true. I guess it's for each S. It did change for each S, so there's four of them, so I guess that's two. There you go. So he, just made it. He, he just explained it for you. Well, but no, we didn't because last time we didn't balance it with we didn't balance the electrons according to this the stoichiometry. We didn't consider that. The last time we did it, we did not consider the two S203s. Right. Uh, so you would just do those two positive electrons. So, so really, we don't have to do anything else because the electrons are equal on both sides. OK? So we have two S203s plus I2 forms S406 plus 2I minus. I'm sorry. Uh, well, it bothered me too. Thank you. Okay. So that will be our equation.
not following you. You'll have to come write it down so I can see what you're talking about. Because <laughs> all, all the numbers coming out of my head are just aren't. So you're saying this is what? If we did it, if we do it by this, if we say this is a negative two, which I'm not sure it is, but if we assume that, then this is a 2.5, okay? And if we say 2.5, that's a, that's a change from here from two to 2.5, it's a 0.5 of half of an electron, basically, it lost, okay? But we have four of them, so that's two. That's, that's what we, which it has to be two because we have four ch charges here and we only have two charges here, so there have to be two electrons, okay? So um, I'm glad you guys are thinking that deep, but sometimes I guess uh, we need to take a step back and look at it, the overall picture, so okay? Say, so basically if it's, if it's the same element, it's a different thing, you take the overall charge? Well, because, because, because yeah. there is a charge, right? See the charge? This is telling us what happened. That charge tells us what happened. But if we write it as this is a three with a negative, uh, or with a four negative charge, and then there's no way it's going to be four of the, uh, but you have plus one of the so charge. So two times S two O three two minus has a four negative charge, like that? No, I need a char this charge has to get multiplied by two. So yes, I would have a negative four charge. And that that and then we'd be left with this two minus charge here. So I had to lose two electrons. Uh-huh. So I had to lose two electrons. Okay, just like, just like uh, this right here. I'm looking at this as kind of the overall picture, right? It has a negative one charge. I have two of them. So that means I have to add two electrons because this is at zero. Okay. We were. We were making it too difficult. We didn't need to do that. So when the oxidation numbers weren't really working out because the oxidation states are probably, not, the oxygen probably is not zero or negative two. We, we should have taken a step back, looked at the, the negative charges uh, to consider it. Okay. I guess you guys need a break, huh? Okay, let's take a break. Let's look at these really quick. Okay, so in, uh, in today's lab, we will take these balanced equations. So here's the balanced equation for the S2032 minus. And um, here it is, uh, let's see, for the, the chloride ion. Okay, so. Let me just write it down here. Plus, plus CF minus. Oops. Okay. 
Okay, now you're going to be running this reaction with starch. Okay, and do you guys know what happens? No, that was the iodine clock reaction. Um, maybe we're not doing it with starch. That was the iodine clock reaction. But we're, we're using a, what are we using? Oh, same idea, we're, we're using a, 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 an indicator. Can I get his starch? I'll have to look at it. But um, to show us when this reaction has gone to completion because we're coupling these two reactions together. We're starting out with this reaction, the bleach, okay, and we're titrating it um, with the SO4062, I'm uh, sorry, with the S203 2 minus, okay? So whenever I make I2 um, from, from this reaction, okay, then this will react with the I2 and, and you'll get that kind of I minus I2 cycle going on there again. Kind of like we did with that, that uh, earlier clock reaction, the I, okay? But we're going to couple those. And we're going to be, be able to relate uh, the amounts of each thing to each other. So we're going to figure out how much of this we're going to use, and that will tell us how much of this is in the, the reaction, OK? Because this, as it reacts here, pull, the I2 gets pulled out by this. And once that reaction stops, because um, we've reached that uh, endpoint, Okay. Um, then we'll be able to know the relationship here. So it's one ClO minus for every two S2O3, two minuses. Okay. That's the, that's the stoichiometric relationship. That's how I'm going to figure out how much ClO minus is in here because I'm going to determine how much of this I used. Okay. And then I'll relate it back to the chloride bleach ion and I'll be able to calculate the moles of bleach to the, uh, that, I, that are in that, that bleach uh, solution, okay? Now, how does that change? One of the questions on your pre-lab, which everybody struggles with, that's why I wanted to go over it a little bit. Not the pre-lab, but the post-lab, okay? How does that change if instead of using uh, ClO minus, I use IO3 minus. Okay, so how does it change if I use IO3? That's that's the uh, more of the question here. And IO3 and I minus are both going to produce the I2. Okay, um, and this is in an acid solution as well. So we can balance that. IO3 minus plus I minus gives me I2, and it's an acid, IO3 minus 2, I2, and I minus to I2, okay? So we, we'll, we'll want to balance these two uh, reactions here. Dang it. Plus H2O, okay, and I need three of them, plus 3H plus, Okay, IO6, thank you, plus 6H plus. Um, and then I'm going, this is a negative 6, negative 5, so this is plus 5, this is 0. Okay, so what am I doing? Am I gaining or losing electrons? Gaining. gaining. So how many electrons? Yeah. Okay, so I gain 5 electrons over there. Um, and now this way, I need two I minuses, right? And I'm going to lose two electrons here. Okay, and uh, then I need to multiply the top one by two, the bottom one by five. So I'm going to get 10 electrons plus 12 H plus uh, plus five I O three minuses. Oh, it's two, I'm sorry. Thank you, because I'm just multiplying by two. Uh, plus two I2s, plus three H2O. Nope, plus six H2O. 
and then on the bottom times five, so I need five I minuses to five I twos plus ten electrons. Okay. Did I do it right? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. There. Did I do it right? Is that, are we okay? Good. Okay. So that's the benefit of me. I have like 50 people checking my work. <laughs> 20 people checking my work. Okay, that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> peer, peer review. Okay. So uh, we have 10 electrons here, 10 electrons here. Okay, those cancel. Um, okay, and we're going to, um, let's see, we have 12 H pluses plus 10 I minuses, oops. Plus two I O three minuses two five six seven I twos six H two O's. How do you know what For this one? Well, if you go up to like 2i, it goes to i2 plus 2e. Up there? Yeah. It goes off two electrons. And then, so uh -huh. I, I just keep getting confused on which side you put the, the electrons on, like on the equation. You, if you lost electrons, it needs to be on the product side. It's a product of the reaction. You lost them. Okay, just think of it like endothermic, exothermic, temperature reactions. If you release energy, you write the energy as a product of the reaction. So if if you gain energy, you're absorbing energy, it's a reactant. So if we lose electrons, then they are on the product side. That's right. So if you go up to where it shows the other one as well, on this one we lost electrons, correct? This one right here? Um, <coughs> this one? We gained electrons. We gained five electrons. Couldn't you also think of it as uh, how you can make it uh, even on both sides with the electrons? Like, you put the electrons on one side, you make it even on both sides, and could you think of it that way? Yeah, that's exactly what you're doing. Oh, okay. Is that? That's exactly what we're so, doing. So on, on the half reactions, you're going to have electrons on one side, and Okay. Okay. It makes sense. I'm getting. Okay. So these are these are uh, react. Uh, the electron is a reactant. It's going to be added to these eyes to form I two. Okay. Okay, so um, let's now t look at a, a few problems where we're uh, trying to calculate the, uh, the voltage of the, of the cell, okay? All right, so 
So we're going to calculate the standard EMF of a cell that uses the uses magnesium to magnesium to plus and copper to copper to plus. Okay. Uh, this is at 25 degrees Celsius, so we can use the we can use the chart. <coughs> okay, so uh, write the equation for the cell reaction that occurs under standard state conditions. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, let's see. Let me try this again. So this will be your reference material on your test. Okay, and this is where I have all those equations right there. Okay, uh, so this is one we're going to be using: cathode minus the anode, plus minus negative. So whatever is more positive minus the more negative thing. Okay, on the chart. Uh, let's see if and here it is. So we want to find magnesium to uh, magnesium to plus. Let's see. Oh. Okay. I think if you go to your last test and you click on the link to the reference material, okay. even though it won't let you want to the test, I think you can still click on the link. Um, and it will it will take you to the reference material. Okay. Um, so here we go. Uh, magnesium plus two electrons to magnesium is a negative two point three seven. Okay. So um, what happened to all the? Here it is. <laughs> it's gone. Okay, so um, magnesium two plus plus two electrons to magnesium is a negative two point three seven. Okay, now copper to uh, copper two plus point one five point three four plus point three four. Copper two plus to cop. Oh, no, not that one. That's copper plus. It's, like a little bit higher. it's a little higher. Oh, there it is. Copper two plus. <laughs> okay, copper two plus plus two electrons gives me copper solid. That's a positive point three four. So plus 0 0.34, right, 0 0.34? Okay. Okay, so I want to do E of the cell. E naught of the cell is equal to uh, E naught of the cathode minus E naught of the anode. Okay, so which one? So the cathode is the positive, more positively charged thing. The anode is the more negatively charged thing. So which is which? So 0 0.34 minus negative 2.37. Not of the cell equal to, what is it? 2.71. It does. So this is, well, yeah, so that's the, that's how, it, it, it is a positive uh, um, charge.
charge here, so it's going to be spontaneous, which is what we're trying to accomplish, right? A spontaneous reaction. If we tried it in the reverse direction, it would not be spontaneous, right? So we'd have to do electrolysis to go the other way. Essentially, That's right. That's right. Okay. So uh, let's see. Okay. So that's how we do that one. Great. So one volts. Oh, volts. We need. Okay, uh, let's try another one. So I didn't have to balance an equation or figure out the stoichiometry, right? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Uh, even if I had a balanced chemical equation, I would still use these numbers exactly as they are, right? Okay, so that's, a, that's an important point. Yes, that's where these are coming from. Are you finding what? No, 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 no. That's what we found. That's what we're finding. EMF. When we're finding, when we're using uh, something like the Nernst equation, or K, or the equilibrium constant, we'll need the number of moles. We will need the balanced chemical equation for that. Yeah. Oh, if we if we continued on, we would, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do it now for silver and aluminum. Okay, so let's find our silver. Okay, here's AL. We'll start there. Um, negative 1.66. Okay, so AL3 plus uh, 2AL. Negative 1.66. Is that what it was? Yes. Okay, and then we need to find it for PG plus 2AG. Okay, so here it is for silver up here, 0.8. Okay, so what is it? What is the E of the E naught of the cell? Equal to. Okay. 2.46. Yeah, so well essentially that's what we're we're going to get everything here should essentially be <coughs> like that it should be that spontaneous because we're going the more positive thing the more negative thing but if we try to reverse that it would be non spontaneous and at, at this is at standard state conditions so if we changed it to uh, um, non-standard state conditions, that might change it from spontaneous to non-spontaneous, so, and then we can we would look at those ratios to figure it out. But, um, okay. Okay, so, can Fe3 uh, plus
Fe3 plus oxidize I minus I2. Yeah. What is the standard state condition of E1? It just means the, the E naught conditions, the one molar, one atmosphere conditions. Okay? Um, and it basically means that you can use that chart because they're all at standard state conditions. That's how they would do it. Okay? So let's look at our chart. Fe3 plus. Um, here it is, Fe3 plus. And uh, let's look at it compared to I minus. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. So Fe3 plus, um, I2, so 2I minus, right? Okay. What, what does this say right here? Oxidizing agent. If you're an oxidizing agent, then you can oxidize something, right? So can Fe3 plus oxidize I minus? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. That I minus. Did you say I minus two I two? Did you say what? I minus. I minus to I2 under standard state uh, conditions. Is I2 to I minus different? Is that any different? Um, yeah. yeah, so we would. Um, No, it's not because it's right here. So it's a. Uh, it would be the opposite of. Uh, well, let's let's see. So we have. It would just be the reverse, right? Negative point five three. Minus negative. Nope. Two. Wait. I I minus two I two. Positive point three. Fe3 plus So, uh, 77. Okay. So, yeah, we can still do it. It would, yeah. So we were the same, okay. Same as like we were right here. But if you say they ask us what's the find on the chart, what's I minus to I two, so we just switch the sign. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right, because if it's point five three going that way, obviously it would be negative point five three going that way. Right. Going the other way. Okay. Oh, and we're out of time. Okay, see you guys in lab. So that was the yes. Yes.